Although certainly um, these days you would calculate the mean and standard deviation using either some kind of graphics calculator or um, spreadsheet software, we're going to look at how to calculate them by hand just so that we can get a little bit of insight into what they represent and um, how they can be used and what they get affected by. <clears throat> so the mean, which is also often referred to just as the average or the statistical average, or it can be called the arithmetic mean as well, is just all of the data added up and then divided by how many data there are. <clears throat> so in this case, we take the sum of all these data and that gives me 3 plus 7 plus 4 is 14, 16.5, 18, 21. <clears throat> and then I divide this by 6 to come up with my mean. So it's going to be 21 divided by 6, which gives me 3.5 or 3.5. <clears throat> so the mean of my data is 3.5. So this 3.5 is meant to be somehow representative of what's normal for this data. We can see, of course, that a lot of values differ you know, reasonably significantly. The 7 is double the 3.5. But in general, this is sort of meant to give the, one of the best indications of what the data looks like overall. Now, <clears throat> in order to give an idea of how reliable that figure is, we have the standard deviation. And what the standard deviation does is calculates, on average, how much the data differs to this mean value of 3.5. <clears throat> so it gives a type of, you know, average variation from this 3.5. <clears throat> so the way that we calculate it is we first take the differences. So. So the differences between each of the observations and of the mean. So we're going to have 3 minus 3.5, we're going to have 7 minus 3.5, 4 minus 3.5, 2.5 minus 3.5, 1.5 minus 3.5, or 3 minus 3.5. <coughs> um, so this is going to give us negative 0.5 here, this will give us positive 3.5, um, this gives us 0 0.5, negative 1, uh, negative 2, and here negative 0 0.5, as before. <coughs> um, so these are all my differences. It doesn't matter, you can do um, work out the differences the other way around, having the mean minus the observation, or we can actually not worry about the um, negative values or the, the negatives here because the next thing we do is take the square of these. <clears throat> so we take all of these differences squared. So I'm going to have um, 0. Point, sorry, that should be a zero, uh, So I'm going to have 0. 0.5 squared or negative 0. 0.5 squared, which gives me 0. 0.25. I'm going to have 3.5 squared, which gives me 12.25. 0 0.5 again, which I already know gives me 0 0.25, half times a half is a quarter. Um, 1 squared, which is just 1. 2 squared, which is 4. And then this 0 0.5 squared again, which is 0 0.25. So that's all of the squared differences that I have. And I then take the sum of these. <coughs> So I'm going to have 0 0.25 plus 12.25 plus 0.25 plus 0.25. So I can actually um, put those together to get 13, 14, and then it's going to be 18 all up. <coughs> Sum is 18. And now instead of dividing by just the six evaluations, um, for this particular type of standard deviation, we actually divide by the number of observations minus 1. So since we've got 6 observations, we're going to divide by 5, but we also, um, you know, if we had 10 observations, we'd divide by 9. If we had 100 observations, we'd divide by 99. This is done for a few reasons, 
Um, one of the things that it enables us to do is, because we've got a small sample, dividing by 5 instead of dividing by 6 will make our number slightly larger. So it sort of adds a little bit on or increases the um, size of how much the deviation is measured by. <clears throat> so what I get here is I'm going to have... Now this, this value is called the variance, <clears throat> and it's calculated as... 18 divided by 5 in this case, which gives me 3.6. <coughs> so, um, the final thing I do to calculate the standard deviation, I'll do it just here, is take the square root. So it's the square root of 3.6, which is about 1.9. Okay, so this is my, my very important figure, the standard deviation. So you see the square root here is sort of like counteracting the fact that we squared the data here. Um, even though we can't just add the data, then square it, or, you know, it's different to that evaluation. <clears throat> but so what we have here, or the way that we can interpret this, is on average how much everything differs from the mean. So we say the mean's 3.5, but on average things are out by about 2. So really, um, given the relative difference of, of these, we would say that this mean isn't really very stable, or you know, the da data actually differs quite a lot from that, which we can see from looking at the data as well. If the standard deviation were much smaller, so if we had a big data set, and we had an average of 3.5, but we had a standard deviation of, say, 0. 0, 02, so two hundredths, then in that case, then we can sort of say, you know, the average is 3.5, standard deviation is very small, so really the 3.5 gives quite a good representation of the overall data set. Okay, so it's probably worth practicing this kind of evaluation a little bit. In exams and assignments, we're not going to give you mountains of data to do it for, but you know, it's probably good if you can do it for about 10 or so. Um, some study guide examples on this as well, as well as the procedure. Okay, have a good week.